In this session, we're going to be demonstrating the use of the Rock Solid Control Strip 2 in a mix environment. As you can see, I'm sat in front of a 4000 series desk, and this is what I would primarily use. Sometimes that's not convenient, and sometimes it's not practical to be able to use analog equipment all the time. And in certain cases, if we've recorded on it, sometimes isn't even that necessary. So what we have here with the Rock Solid Control Tip 2 is essentially layout of this to work seamlessly with plugins in your door. Because I use this sort of type of console, I'm very keen and familiar with using the types of plugin that marry up to this. So today I'm going to be using the Waves and the Brainworks. What I'm going to do is kind of just look through quickly how this functions within the door and then we're going to kind of just start rolling and you can see the kind of ease and practicality of it. So I've got a track here which is a drum kit, bass, a couple of different guitars as a solo, lead vocals and uh, some BVs and we're going to get this really quickly mixed just showing the functionality of this unit and how fast and tactile you can work with the door. So if I have a quick listen to the chorus, I've just muted off everything other than drums and bass. So I'm just going to load up uh, an SSL plugin on my first kick here, which is the PZM kick inside the kick drum. And then I'm going to load up another, the kick mic, just outside the kick drum. So on the first, I'm going to go here, I'm going to load up the Brainworks. Now the cool thing is, because this has already been mapped using the Control Hub software, I can literally now just touch on the unit and I've got control over the functions of that plugin straight away. So immediately these controls are linked exactly the same to what's going on the plugin. So I have my threshold, I can address ratios, I can do input outputs, etc turn on and change to the bell curve, uh, shelving, I can EQ in and out, dynamics in and out, I've got polarity, everything's kind of there at, at the touch of a button, which is incredible. And this is what makes this really, really cool. If I close this plugin down and now move over to my second kick and I load up the E-Series Waves plugin, don't need to change anything, just carry on working. So straight away, I've now got control in exactly the same way. I have my outputs, inputs, I have the bell curve, I can turn on the polarity on and off. I have all the same functionality, bypass EQ, bypass compression, etc. Identical. The really, really, really cool thing is if I've mapped it onto something like the E series and I have then, for example, the G series type, which is similar to what we have here, I can go down to that selection and the same thing happens. I have control over everything already. It's already there. It's an incredibly fast and functional tool that allows me to operate fast within the mix. I'm now just going to kind of quickly work through the drums. I'm going to probably want to use the waves on uh, my hi-hats, my snare bottom, snare top, and then I'm going to just insert that plug-in on everything. And I'm probably then going to do the same thing with the brain works on my rooms and my overheads. So again, I can just quickly select SSL4, there we go, bang, in. So now what I do is I just have to simply select onto the track, click on the plugin, work away, which is cool. So let's have a little go. I'm going to actually loop around this chorus. Okay, so you can see now I'm quickly just shaping the sound. I'm using that inside kick to just get all my snap and all the kind of honk out of the kick. And I want the other mic to basically take care of the lower end. 
but this is very similar to how I would use this. When you look at a, an EQ on here, you can't see the direct number. You can't see a specific. So 250 hertz, it's like, well, I'm kind of in that ballpark, but I have to listen. And the difference with that is I'm now listening and I'm paying attention to the sound and I have something here which I can quickly manipulate. So if I go back here and I'm just going to check phase again, so I'm just going to quickly put myself in mono on my console. So here, when I'm looking at the phase reverse, yeah, there's maybe a little low end, but I lose some of the punch. So the way that the EQs work together, I'm kind of happy with where they're sitting. And now I'll just continue to work through the rest of the drums and just see if we can get somewhere pretty fast. So for something like this with the under mic, it's already been pushed on the console in the same way that I'm going to kind of do now. I'm going to drive my input on the unit, bring the output down so I get a bit more. The cool thing with this is I'm able to kind of just quickly, with the mouse you do one, then you go the other, then you go one, then the other, and trying to find that balance takes time. Whereas here it's very quick. So here I'm quickly able to, again, in and out of um, context, like I, like I would simply soloing on the desk, listen and solo, check things and work through. So moving forwards on the overheads, I'm just going to bypass these because I don't think I actually need them. And I'm going to put something on the drum kit. Now this is the thing that makes things really kind of cool. Now I'm not looking like I want to use one of the SSL plugins. I want to use something different. And this is again where the control comes in to be incredibly useful. I've got the drum kits set out in different ways here. So I've got most of the overheads, room, uh, hi-hats, and I can start throwing things into a singular bus. So this is going to give me the kind of overall drum impact and sound and kind of vibe, I suppose. And then my individual close mics can then create the articulation. So on my drum bus here, what we have is this. So I want to bring some of that air, room, etc. So I'm going to use a different plugin. So in this case, I'm going to use the uh, TG12345, which is based on the EMI TG12345 console. Now, if I just quickly run over to the control hub, you can see here I've got this set up in my presets. And it's actually part of in the preset exchange set up by Rock Solid Audio. I can then start to utilize functions within that, which is great. So now what I have is a controller that was set out in this format, but is now controlling my plugin.
so here I want, might want to use some of that compression because it's got a really aggressive compressor, the TG. So I've set up um, in some some of this, I've actually mapped some of this myself. So um, I've got a selection here now where I can turn the compression on or the limiter. And I've set my hold and recovery time. So in this case, I've got the recovery and then the essentially the hold. Um, <laughs> So that's cool, it's sounding like really naughty, distorted. It might be a bit too much, but I'll later see what that's like in context. And I'm being a little bit over the top today. Um, what I haven't done yet, because I sometimes do or don't use it, is I haven't assigned the mix and I haven't uh, necessarily assigned some of the other functions. So I'm just gonna show you how to assign one of the controls. So I'm gonna assign the mix control in the control hub just to show you how quickly it can be done. So I've set this on a, another window in my operating system. So here, I literally want to find a control that I want to use for that function. So in this instance, stuff that's not being used, the filters at the top. So I know, for example, the high filter here. I can go to the high pass or low pass. In this case, this is the low pass filter. So I can set that linear and I literally sit up, hit the C and it says, hold on what I want to use. So I come back in here, I click with my mouse, hold it for a second, and I now have control it's done so i can now quickly listen to the compression parallel so the idea here is you can quickly manipulate as you want to go which is great so on the base, I want to use the 4000 series compressor. So I'm using the Brainworks. I'm just like, the, the compression's a bit smoother for me on this. I'm just going to drop the output slightly as well here. This is pretty much the same sort of kind of format and way I would work with the console, where I'd boost the input a little bit to get more channel coming into the compressor, then I could play with the threshold and the ratio a little bit more, low in the output stage, and it's exactly the same way that I would do this. Because again, I'm listening, I'm trying to hear what the compressor's doing, and I'm not just basing it on what I'm seeing. Ironically, this is actually quicker doing this on the plugin than it would be doing it physically on the desk because I'm having to kind of jump between the two. I know this seems ridiculous because it's only a small space, but on here it's literally small hand movements. Great, so now I've got the compressor working. I'm going to open up another EQ because I want to use a different type of EQ in relation to what's going on with the drums. So here we've got the classic American EQ, the 550B. What you can see here is I now have two plugins open because I've selected with my mouse on to the 550B, the controller understands that that's the one I want to use. So now I can start to operate with my low end frequency, etc., and I can start to increase and decrease. I have all the normal controls. If I want to go back to the 4000, I simply click on my mouse on the 4000. The controller now understands that that's the plugin that I'm using, and it will give me functionality control over that one. So I still have the channel selected so I can solo and unsolo according. So I have a really fast workflow here. If it's in business, so it's like, yeah, I've got the increase, decrease. So now I want to hear it in context. So here it's like a decision whether or not I want the kick drum to take over the low frequency and the low thump or the bass. At the moment the bass is kind of controlling that lower end. But what I can do is I can now quickly nip over. I'm keeping both my bass plugins still open and I'm still keeping selected on the bass. But I'm now going to open up the 4000 series on the kick drum out. I've got two types of 4000 series and one 
type of the 550, the American type. So what I can do now is really quickly jump between all the plugins and still use the controller. <laughs> So then I'm able to jump between the different EQs, try different things. The idea, again, I'm trying to listen, not look. And this is kind of, I think, a big advantage here. So I'm trying to get that headspace into my mind. So but then I can come back at the end and have a technical look, go through and double check if things are becoming a bit ridiculous if I've got too much low end on. But you'll see as we do a kind of a look through at the end where some of the decisions have been made would be maybe not what you would conventionally think, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so I'm going to move on to guitars. Um, we've got two guitar parts, which so is a double tracked part, and each part has two microphones. So we have a close and a room. At the moment, these are panned hard left, right, and then the room's just slightly in. I'm going to sub mix these two mics of the individual guitar into a singular so I can kind of deal. I like the balance of the, of the mic itself. It's got a bit of space, it's got that kind of room. So what I'm going to do is quickly just add uh, a new buzz to that. So I'm going to create a new track. I'll just call this um, guitar left. Uh, make sure it's mono. Cool. Hit that. So I have now one guitar on the left hand side. So I'm just going to solo safe this and add in the Brainworks. I think it's a little bit smoother for what I want for this point. So I'm just going to press play and have a little listen. use the controller in this instance to not really look at the screen and really focus on listening and more kind of concentrating on what I'm doing with my hands. If I need to, I'll kind of reference back to the screen to see roughly where I am as there's no uh, direct control over what's happening with the, um, say for example, frequency location or the cue location. So I can have a quick look and go. I also want to make sure that I'm doing this in full context. So everything's together. I'm just going to come up to, uh, I think, verse one I'll start with. So if I do any of these decisions or I start using the EQ in solo, I can sometimes make kind of decisions that don't make really any sense to the mix. So I'm going to do this in context. So I'll press play, head down and just have a listen and see if I can make some decisions with everything kind of working. <laughs> So for me, that's I'm feeling a little bit more happy with that sound as, as it sits at the moment. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing with the other guitar. So I'm just going to mute this one off. So take guitar two, and I'm going to continue in the same fashion. So I'm going to create a new bus, and literally same process.
so here again, I'm. I had to just increase the input because it was a little quieter than the previous, just so I can hit the compressor. It's the same function we did with the bass. And I'm looking at now what's gone on. I'm kind of yeah, that seems something reasonable to where I was kind of thinking I wanted the sound to go, but I didn't have any real idea because I'm kind of just utilizing the control. I'm just listening, listening. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the plugin open. I'm going to pan the right guitar to the right. I'm going to open up the left guitar to the left and I'm going to just select my two guitars. So again, if I shift S, I will solo now just the guitars on their own. And if I shift S again, it will allow the whole thing to context. And I'm going to open up both plugins. So now what I have is on the left, I have my left guitar 4000 series. On the right of the window, I have my right guitar 4000 series. I have solo option available and I have context option available. So now I press play and I can then start to address. In fact, I'm going to add the lead vocal in as well. So I'm just going to pop the lead vocal in, get a quick balance just so I can get an idea. Cool. So I just did a quick balance there just to make sure that any decisions that I'm making with the plugins aren't based on an imbalance. So this is now a frequency thing. So now I'm just going to listen and see if I readjust any of the decisions that I made previously with everything in, in place. Cool. So I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, I would then now continue to move on to the next step. So some the harmonies, a little bit on the vocal. You. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to predominantly just listen to the vocals in relation to the guitars without necessarily the drums involved or the bass. Just so I can kind of just hear where that relationship is happening. Because the drums and bass are kind of driving and the guitars are adding their... They're kind of interesting. I'm going to hit the chorus because that's where the harmonies are in. You open up my mind, made me feel I'm all the time to love you. When it all comes through, there's nothing left that I can do. Yeah, see, I'm lost on you. Cool. So we've got a double track going on there, and that's helped to bolster the lead vocal anyway. But I'm going to just add a little bit of desk information onto the doubles and the chorus uh, harmony. Starting with the harmony first. Again, back to my lovely 4000 from Brainworks. And let's have a quick listen. You open up my mind, made me feel I'm all the time to love you. When it all comes through, there's nothing left that I can do yet. Yeah. See, I'm lost on you. You open up my mind, made me feel I'm all the time to love you. When it all comes through, there's something left that I can do, yeah. Cool. So that's the BVs now jumping with a little bit of EQ and some compression. And again, I'm not really thinking too much about it i'm not trying to be too deep into oh i think this frequency would be good and so on i'm just kind of using my ears having to listen uh, there is a reverb attached to this and we've already timed and set that up so i'm going to include the reverb now back to the double track with the double track in i'm going to also include the drums and the bass so now i should have all the instrumentation that i have and i can just quickly now i'm going to actually in fact bring up the chorus bv EQ is or of course BB channel as well. Again, same thing, left, right. So I can, I've got both going on. You open up my mind, made me feel I'm all the time to love you. When it all comes through, there's nothing left that I can do yet. See, I'm lost on you. You open up my mind. Come 
Cool. So that seems pretty decent. We can have a little look at maybe some of the decisions that I've made using the control strip too. So if I go back to my drums, for example, um, looking at the kick where I was trying to get more of the low end, etc. out. If I have a little look at that, I look at some of the decisions that I've made. You know, I'm increasing, and here, this is based on my ears. I'm around 82, so that's kind of where I probably wanted to be, and I probably would have just gone to like 80 or something if I was doing it with my eyes. My ears working in there in this kind of sound that I'm looking for, but the increase, I'm nearly 13 dB up, which I certainly wouldn't have done from a visual point of view. Uh, you would also see that the channel strip is overloading, which in an SSL actually sounds quite nice. I'm creating harmonic distortion. So it is creating a little bit of an extra harmonic in there. Didn't add any top end, didn't add any sort of kind of higher mids, took a bunch out at like, in this case, 400. And the same with the compression, I'm looking here, this is a 5.7 ratio, which I would, I'm not gonna type in 5.7 and go. So from that sort of kind of element, it looks and operates very similar to how you would use something analog. In the same premise, when we look at the 550, where I'm kind of pulling things out and adding things, yeah, they're around the sort of area that you would normally expect to operate within. But it's things like the guitars that I, I, I tend to find that the decisions are something slightly different than I would normally work with. Most here, you might find that, oh yeah, you want around 800. So here again, I've pulled out 800 and, and increased. Where the cue is, so which part of the band, that's just based on ears. So from my point of view here, that's really helped me to just create the sonic that I want, as opposed to it being something like, oh, I need to do this key width, this shouldn't be any more, and I work in it from that format. Again, this creates such a useful bond between the digital realm and the kind of analog, like I say, tactile kind of tangible realm. What we look for here though is how something like this will incorporate into your workflow or people's workflows so from an engineer's point of view for somebody who's using analog we're able to keep that feel keep that flow keep that kind of um, contact with what we would normally do it's a little bit easier for me to now get that if i'm not an analog operator so i'm somebody who's primarily and always works in the box this then offers the opportunity to remove your eyes essentially from the equation when you're working sonically. If I'm trying to do some of the stuff that I did earlier with the guitars where I'm just simply listening, I can't do that with the mouse. Because if I'm looking at the screen, I can't close my eyes and be able to jump to the high mids, the low mids, change the compression, look at the input, the outputs, adjust phase, etc. I can do that with this without looking. And that creates a completely different way of using plugins in a mixed context. The fact that it doesn't have to be based on the 4000 series and you can use all sorts of different stuff, even better. But in the mouse mode functionality, we could argue the only small downside to this is that you can't utilize two controls at the same time. So if you're using this as an automation function or wanting to do something where I'm doing a mid sweep and I'm changing the cue size, this is not functional. I have to do it as two separate passes. That's about the only time I can think I would use two controls at the same time. Otherwise, I'm doing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Like you saw when I was increasing the input, changing the output. That is much faster than it would be if I was to do it with the mouse. So from that perspective, it's an incredibly useful tool to engage your touch senses. So one of the things that you might find is in with the plugins that you've got, you don't have some of the controls that are available, some of the things that are not there or the functionality is slightly different. So one of the things that I noticed that doesn't really bug me, but if it did, I'd, I could fix it, is on the console for me, when I reach for the compression, my ratio is the top and my threshold is the next control for me. So on here, my ratio is actually the second control in the compression and the threshold at the top. Small thing. Um, and now I'm used to it, I don't really mind. And it's so quick to keep readjusting. So even if I forget and I go to threshold, I'm moving ratio, I'm like, oh, whoops, change. Not a big deal. So if I did want to adjust the threshold and ratio into different controls here, so I'll have ratio where the threshold is and threshold where the ratio is to mirror, all I simply do is go into my control hub, pick the um, plugin that I want to deal with. So I'm going to look at the waves one here. 
So I highlight this, I can literally come across where it says compression threshold, which I would want to be the ratio. I just hit the R to remap, hit the C to then map it essentially, come across. So this is my, again, my threshold needs to be ratio. So I now click on ratio on the plugin and I can come back over here and switch the ratio to be the threshold. But this is your prerogative essentially. Now what I have is when I go to the top control, it's controlling ratio like it does on here. And I go to the second underneath control, it controls threshold. So without me looking at the physical writing, I'm able to kind of just remap it. And this is one of the other things that's probably quite useful to mention. Using a control surface over using your mouse, unless you spend some time really thinking of the ergonomic position, using your mouse to do lots of control features does tend to put a little bit of strain on the wrist. Doing this... It's much more natural and free. I don't really put any stress. So I find after, a, especially with a big mix, if I'm being more detailed over a period of time, I do find that sometimes I get a little bit of a niggle. So I have to make sure that I'm constantly, it's very easy to become slouched and slack. It's just kind of normal human response. So I'm very conscious of the ergonomic of my wrist. This makes it so much easier. I very now, it's like I'm always quite loose. because I'm using the mouse almost like half the time, which is kind of cool. One of the other really cool things with Rock Solid Audio, if there is in the preset exchange something that doesn't yet exist, you can actually request a preset. So what we can look for then is we can say, oh, would you be able to do X, Y and Z? And they'll be able to get back to you with a formulated preset. The other thing that we haven't really discussed or looked at is the fact that you can use this in MIDI mode. So this can act as a multi-control functionality. So it will work as a MIDI controller. If I was working in something like, for example, uh, Logic or something else, Ableton, etc., where I may be doing more synthesis, or even in Pro Tools and I'm doing something that requires soft synths or soft instrumentation, then I can use this in MIDI mode as well in the production stage. So really versatile, incredibly useful piece of kit bus powered so we don't have to have any external power supply it just makes it great so you can run this off your laptop uh, you could run this anywhere and still have the same functionality as if you were sitting in front of a desk which kind of makes it uh, a pretty invaluable addition to your workflow so if you're uh, an analog user or an in-the-box user i'm sure you can find some sort of benefits for this when it all comes to